do you want to teach your kids a real lesson in how to save? We have found two very useful websites. They might even teach you a thing or two. And then tomorrow we got to get out and shovel, snow blow. Right. But not only do we have to do that, we have to do it in 12 degree it is weather. It's going to be very cold tomorrow. John and Mallory, well, these are soda cans, but imagine if they were beer cans. A 180 pound man would need to drink 17 beers in a five hour period to reach that 0 0.30 blood alcohol content level that Jason Lawyer had when he caused that fatal crash. And let me tell you, it is hot here, but I must have found the best location in the entire place. It's because of these two fans that you see on either side of me. These are misting and blowing cool mist out into the crowds. Local breaking news, we've been following the search for a suspect after a high speed chase that circled around the Midtown area and led to South Omaha. Emergency broadcast indicated the person police were looking for was armed and dangerous. Jeff Saban continues our coverage from 38th and I where police recovered the suspect's vehicle. Now Jeff, are officers still searching for anyone at this time? I would I would think so. I mean, that's what they do for a living. Let's hope so, but I, either way, either, and no matter what, I'd taste I see I'm speechless. Yes, There's so much chocolate. Yes. It just makes me giddy. Good evening, I'm Jamie McCutcheon. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Happening locally live at 5, students walk in together as a show of solidarity for their first day back. Awaiting them, a message from Millard South Principal Curtis Case, who was in the hospital recovering from his shooting injuries. In a brief statement released on his behalf, he told students, quote, I am proud of you and the staff, and I look forward to coming back. Today, his condition was upgraded to fair. Brian Mastry was there as students returned for their first day since Wednesday's shooting. The 16-year-old sophomore who was with Butler when he vandalized the school's football field continues to serve out a 19-day suspension. He, along with Butler, was ticketed for trespassing through his attorney, Stu Dornan. The student says he knew Butler, but not well. He says he did not know anything related to the shooting. Dornan says the teen has cooperated with police and turned over his cell phone to investigators. A moment of silence will be observed at tomorrow's basketball game at Millard South in memory of Dr. Vicki Casper. Today it was announced that Millard Public Schools Foundation has established a scholarship in her honor. Donations can be sent to this address, 5225 South 159th Avenue, Omaha 68135. Additionally, a request has been made that in lieu of flowers at her funeral, donations be made to Northwest Bank at 13420 Arbor Street. The zip code there, 68144. Funeral arrangements have also now been made for the gunman Robert Butler Jr. The service will be held Saturday morning in Lincoln with the burial to follow. A man described as a person of interest in the case of a missing Nebraska college student was in court today accused of sexually assaulting another woman. Joshua Keetel is facing three Mr. counts Keetel, of sexual assault and two other evidence. felony charges for allegedly raping a woman Halloween night. The woman, identified as KJ, says Keetel took her to a spot near the Missouri River and forced her to have sex with him, or she said he would kill her and dump her body in the Missouri River. The family of 19-year-old Peru State College student Ty Thomas was also in the courtroom today. She has been missing since December 3rd. Prosecutors outlined a pattern in both cases. You could uh, tell that there were. Keto will stand trial on the sexual assault charges on January 19th. Also today, there are new revelations in the Ty Thomas case and what investigators uncovered after interviewing Keto. Jody Baker will bring us those details coming up tonight, live at 6. Not enough to worry about, but we have seen a little bit of snow this afternoon, and that's not the end of it in our forecast. We're going to go right now to meteorologist Caitlin Roth, who has a first look at our hour-by-hour -hour forecast. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Jamie. You're right. We full forecast. Yeah, they don't look so great, do no, they? No, they don't. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Caitlin. Sure. The motive behind the murder of a 54-year-old service station manager remains still a mystery. Friends of Milton Jackson want to know just why he was the target. Backpack journalist Jeff Saban spoke with one friend who says Jackson was a good man with an infectious personality. There have been no arrests so far in connection with that case. A man brings a rock into a bridal store as a robbery weapon, but the clerk not intimidated and refuses to turn over any money. Officers eventually caught up with 26 year old Robert Delamont after he was ran after he ran from that business. They say he was scared off when the clerk's husband confronted him inside the modest bride store on 19th and Vinton. It might be another five years before the nation's unemployment rate drops to a normal level. That's the prediction of the Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke addressing lawmakers on Capitol Hill. Bernanke says while it's taking time, there's more evidence that a self-sustaining recovery is taking hold. 
Bernanke's comments coincide with the release of the latest unemployment rate. It dipped slightly in December to 9.4 percent. But analysts point out the drop was fueled in part by the decision by many unemployed workers to just give up their job search. With iPhones in hand, our eye reporters continue to keep an eye on the heartland. We begin with one school's new effort to work more exercise into the daily routine. Because of the popularity of today's event, the VNA says it will try to host another free health screening when kids head back to school in the fall. If you have an iPhone clip to share, head to our web channel, WWT.com, and look under the News tab. There you'll find a link to our Eye on the Heartland and instructions for uploading your video. Still ahead after sports, do you want to teach your kids a real lesson in how to save? We have found two very useful websites. They might even teach you a thing or two. Plus, Blockbuster explains some of the changes it will be making in the coming year in order to better serve its customers. And we're looking at a very chilly start to the second week of the year. Caitlin has more on that, plus the approach of more snow next. This is Channel 6 News, live at 5. Next week, boy, yeah, it's going to be cold. <laughs> you know, if you don't like the snow, it's never a good sign when you see the snow ducky. The snow back ducky is <laughs> not forecast. a good sign. That's, that's right. Start the week off with snow. And then negative temperatures. I know. Burn. Yeah. You don't look Ruffle. too happy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone's going <laughs> right. to. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Caitlin. It's one of the biggest problems when it comes to airline reward programs. If you don't fly often enough, you usually lose your points. Coming up after our look at what's new on the net, how one airline is changing its policy for passengers. Up next, this month's Food for Thought. Marilyn steps in to talk about milk substitutes and how they stack up to the real thing. You're watching Channel 6 News live at 5. When it comes to New Year's resolutions, many of us take things out of our diet. But what if you added something instead? Making sure you're getting enough milk dramatically boosts your nutrition. And it's possible to do it even if dairy doesn't agree with you. In January's Food for Thought, registered dietitian Marilyn Wadham takes a look at the options. Marilyn recommends low-fat dairy for families. That means 1% or skim milk. For this month's Meals and Minutes, head to MomsEveryDay.com. It's the first road game and conference play for the Creighton Blue Jays. Up next, Greg tells us why the Blue Jay defense just might be the key to a win. This is Channel 6 News Live at 5. Out with a win against Southern Illinois. All right, we will look for the highlights at 10. We'll have them. All right, thanks a lot, Greg. And up next, new on the net, getting a grip on spending. We have two websites to show you. One tells you how long you would need to save in order to purchase the items you want. The other tells you the real cost when you're using a credit card. You're watching Channel 6 News live at 5. New on the net, ever wonder how long it might take to save for a really big ticket item? Well, instead of guessing, a website can do all the work for you. At DaysToPay.com, you can calculate how long it will take you to earn the money you need to purchase an iPad, a big screen TV, or whatever else you're interested in buying. There's also a companion site called TheRealDamage.com. It will calculate how much your purchase will cost you in the end if you use a credit card and carry a balance. Now, our six on your side consumer coverage. Southwest Airlines is improving its program for frequent flyers. Changes to the Rapid Rewards program will begin March 1st. Basically, every seat booked will earn participants points, and there are no blackout periods. Additionally, points will not expire as long as members book a flight or utilize one of the partner programs once every two years. Currently, any unused points expire if not used within a two-year period. Blockbuster is also making changes as it seeks to emerge from bankruptcy. The company is closing more of its stores and is adding hundreds more kiosks, similar to those operated by Redbox. Blockbuster is also pushing its on-demand service, which allows customers to get instant access to movies on 100 different portable devices. We had to keep customers tuned in, the company recently launched its first national ad campaign in three years. Once again, visitors to our national parks will be able to get in for free during certain days this year. The first free dates are January 15th through the 17th in honor of Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. Additionally, the parks will be free on 15 other days this year, April 16th through the 24th, June 21st, September 24th, and November 11th through the 13th. While admission on those days is free, other park fees will still apply. Caitlin's back now with a final check of our hour-by-hour -hour forecast for the day.
All right, well, we've got a little bit of snow on the radar, that's for sure. So if you're snowing for about, you know, two days straight. Yeah. <laughs> so if you were keeping your fingers crossed that it would miss us, I know. forget it. It's yeah, going to hit us. It's really going to encompass a large part of the area. So. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Caitlin. Sure. And thank you so much for joining us. Channel 6 News continues in 30 minutes with Live at 6. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and our web channel, WOWT.com. John and Mallory, those sons were brought here to Creighton University Medical Center. Now, this is the same hospital where their father, Dr. Adam Smith, was soon to complete his residency as a radiologist. Both boys had serious injuries. However, it was the two-year-old who had more severe injuries, like a fractured skull. But it was that eight-year-old who saw it all happen and understands what he saw, that his father did not survive. He just wanted to know if his dad was alive. Is my dad okay? Is my dad alive? But for an eight-year-old boy and his dad, 33-year-old Dr. Adam Smith, this crash just east of 120th on Harrison changed everything. Hit the center island, went airborne about a foot, foot and a half, and hit the westbound Ford Focus, and then the Chevy Impala T-boned the Ford Focus. Smith was driving this Ford Focus with his eight and two-year-old sons hit head-on by the Honda Accord. The Honda's driver, 27-year-old Jason LeWare, was cut from his car and taken to a waiting helicopter. We have some indication that alcohol may be a factor, so we are investigating that aspect of it. We found these pictures of LeWare on his MySpace page, alcohol in hand for many of them. While there was reason to rush LeWare to the hospital, there was nothing anyone could do for Adam Smith. He died at the scene. You think you're tougher than you are, but like I said, it's just, it tears at you when a little boy, six years old, is in your car and all he can ask is if his dad is dead already. Finding out that he was on his way to taking his son to their first uh, day of school was even more heartbreaking. Dr. Min Liu worked side by side with Adam Smith, first at Creighton's medical school, then in their five-year residency there. He was very witty, has a you know, great sense of humor and you know, incredibly um, talented and good at what he, he does. And even better at Smith's number one role. Him and his wife, they have three beautiful children, uh, the youngest of which is um, only a um, couple months old. He is. He's very, very proud. You know, he, he has uh, pictures of his kids, and he always talks about his kids. And, you know, he's, he's a wonderful dad. A dad whose three young children and wife must now learn to live without, along with so many others who loved him. We lost a great radiologist. Uh, as a person, as a father, you know, he was exemplary in, in what he did with, you know, for his kid, for his community. Dr. Liu tells me that Adam's wife, Melissa, a nurse at Methodist, is amazingly strong tonight in leaning on the couple's faith. They were devout Mormons, and it is no doubt their faith that is helping them get through everything tonight here inside Creighton University Medical Center. Another person here, the man accused of causing that crash, Jason LeWare, he is expected to survive his injuries, and charges are expected against him. Reporting live, Jamie McCutcheon, Channel 6 News. And John and Tracy, that's just where we are at 108th and Crown Point. And just west from me at 109th and Crown Point, that's where the crime scene is. Now, if we can take a look at the video from that area, this all happened around 8.30 this evening at 132nd and Maple. The Bakers there, police tell us that that Bakers was robbed. And shortly after that, Abel 1 was put up into the air, spotted a suspect vehicle, and that's when police gave chase. Now, we talked to a witness who was here at the scene at that time. He he tells us that he saw a car go flying by along with several police cars and then he heard three to five shots fired. Now according to police at that time a help an officer call was put out and two suspects were arrested. And here at Midtown Crossing we're seeing a lot of these signs right now coming soon. Definitely a good thing economically for this area. Another restaurant coming soon is Crave. It's set to open up on October 11th. And with all the construction continuing, it doesn't really look like a baseball field quite yet. But take a look all the way across the field. A green pipe sticking out of the ground. That's near the future home plate. Greg Ortiz joins us now live. And Greg, you know, I always just say, any kind of win is good. Is it's Bo, a win. Is Bo ever really happy, though? <laughs> well, true. No. Well, win, yes. It Snow blowers in order for tomorrow. <laughs> definitely. It's plowable. It, it is, is definitely plowable. plowable. You learned snow. that. <laughs> <laughs> Just a wonderful weekend to get outside and do something. It's something fall like, even though it feels like summer. Yeah, it has been an easy start to fall. All right. Thank you, Andrea. And thank you so much for joining us. Channel 6 News continues in 30 minutes with Live at 6. But right now, it's time for NBC Night News with Brian Williams. Have a great night.